Oh, the 80s were a time when a movie like this existed, and it was a hit, and it was funny, and everybody just accepted it, and since then it's become sort of like a punchline, where people just use the title for things. Um, so it's managed to somewhat say culturally relevant, because I've, I've heard people say, you know, oh, let's weekend at Bernie's or something like that uh, with regards to somebody looking so old that they might be dead. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know about this movie. And yes, this is my first time watching Weekend at Bernie's. Um, so uh, that I know of, unless I, I don't know, watched it when I was really little on cable or something and didn't know what I was watching. Um, it is PG-13, so it's not that far stretch. So, I'm Mac from MacMovieGuy.com, trying to make faster movie reviews and get them in shorter. Uh, and uh, this is a review of Weekend at Bernie's. By the way, I'm a blind film critic, so I... Not that this matters uh, for this film. I, I just really... I can't imagine that I missed any, <laughs> any visual cues in this movie. Um... I kind of remember what he looked like. I feel like I've seen, like, clips or, like, a poster of Bernie. Um, I feel like he was wearing, like, a Hawaiian t-shirt or something. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Um, this stars uh, Jonathan Silverman and Andrew McCarthy. And if you were born in the last 20 years, you'd probably just went, who? And that's totally valid. Um... <laughs> Just 100% valid. I can't. <laughs> um, and uh, if you're blind and were born in the last 20 years, you're going to be like, isn't that, isn't that that guy from Friends? Because I spent like the whole show, oh, I spent the whole movie going, is Matthew Perry in this? <laughs> um, because they both have this strange accent. <laughs> Jonathan Silverman and Andrew McCarthy are both doing this uh, this sort of New Yorker, whiny New Yorker accent that almost perfectly matches Matthew Perry's accent from Friends. It sounds like two Chandlers are <laughs> going through this. It's, um, it's quite an interesting film. Anyway, uh, this film is stupid. Um... It's kind of enjoyably stupid in that dude, where's my car, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure type of way where, uh, there are parts of it that are kind of funny because it's so, it's so stupid. It's funny. Um, but it's, it's really dumb. I mean, this film hinges on a lot of people not noticing that this dude is dead. A lot of people. A lot of people. <laughs> like, um, by the way, this film is far past what I would consider to be uh, spoiler free. So I feel like I can talk about it. And uh, I also, I don't think you can spoil this film. So, because uh, the film, the whole premise of the film is that Bernie is dead. So even though at the beginning of the film he's alive you know he has to die because that's the premise of the film is that these two guys are carrying around a dead body the whole film. So it doesn't... There is no way to spoil this film because the film's plot spoils itself. <laughs> I don't know how else to tell you that. So, um, yeah, the biggest twist in the film is Bernie dies. <laughs> like, oh... Cool, now the film starts? Um, but when... So, uh, I guess, like, just to connect all these characters together, let's give a brief rundown. So, the two guys, uh, Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman, uh, they're low-level employees at Bernie's company, and they find, like, this fraud thing, and... <sighs> And uh, they think that they can, that it'll get them this promotion. And they go and they talk to Bernie. And Bernie's at first, he's like, oh. Uh, and then uh, he sees what it is. And he uh, decides to invite them out to his house for the weekend. He's like, oh, good job, guys. You're going to move up in the world. Um, 
and uh, there's this intern that's like leaving on her last day, and one of the guys asks her out, so we have a, a side character, Gwen, so that one of them can have a romantic love interest. Um, and uh, uh, Bernie turns out he was the one that was skimming money, so he goes to his like, I guess, mob accomplice friend person. Uh, and, uh, he's like, we gotta kill these two guys, I got them coming out to my house, uh, send your, send your guy, and, uh, let's, let's get them, we'll make it look like a murder-suicide, somewhat rather offensive murder-suicide, but I will say that, that, uh, when the two guys find out about it, their reaction wasn't too terrible for the 80s, but, um, the film decided to uh, make them lovers and that uh, one of them killed the other because they wanted, because he wanted a sex change operation and then the other one wouldn't love him. That was literally, that was going to be the murder suicide that they were setting up for this assassination attempt on Jonathan Silverman and Andrew McCarthy's best friend characters. Um, so not, quite the thing we would see nowadays but I, I will say that their reaction wasn't uh horrendously offensive um just the the concept that that was that that was funny that that was the joke the go-to joke back then um felt very 80s doesn't feel like a joke we would make today um but uh surprisingly they handled it about as well as as anybody could have handled that in the 80s um, out of any film. So I was actually surprised. I was like, oh, they're going to, oh, this is going to be a bad jokes. And it turned out not. And I was like, okay, cool. We just, uh, we moved on really quickly from that. Uh, I'm glad we didn't beat that dead horse. Um, we just left it alone. <laughs> um, and uh, so the guys go out there. And they've decided, I guess, that Bernie was more of a problem than these two guys. So they, they whacked Bernie instead. And uh, the two guys, it takes it takes them a while. Like an uncomfortable amount of time uh, before even they realize that Bernie's dead. Like they actually, like Bernie's sitting in a chair, uh, drug overdose is the way that they went there, and, uh, he's not, he's dead, he's not moving, he's not talking, nothing, nothing's happening, and they, like, physically move him to another room, because they think he's, like, too tired, and they're like, oh, we gotta get the blood flowing, and it's like, that's not the problem, and that's before they even discover the drugs, they just think he's tired, so, they lift him and carry him to another room, meanwhile, no response from this dude who uh, is their boss and you would think we'd like say something or make like a noise or yell at them or something like stop carrying me into the other room. Nope. Nothing at all. And they find nothing weird about that. And then it takes them a while and eventually they figure out, you know, uh, but nobody else does. Uh, they have, like, a huge party inside the house, and they keep passing Bernie around, and there's just a dead body, and no one else seems to notice that Bernie's dead. And, uh, not talking. And the whole film hinges on the fact that nobody's able to tell that Bernie's dead. And I don't know if this is social commentary on rich people being stupid, or what it is, but... Uh, the whole film hinges on this improbability that we can go an entire film without anybody figuring this out. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's Weekend of Bernie's. Um, and, uh, Gwen, not the best actress, not the worst actress. I'm not surprised she didn't blow up as a career. But, uh, also, uh, like I said, she just felt very 80s. I'll go with that. She felt very 80s to me. 
the way that the line delivery and everything. Um, but also I'm, I'm not surprised she's not still, this wasn't like a launching pad for her career. Um, I don't know if this was a launching pad for anybody's career, but Jonathan Silverman and Andrew McCarthy did manage to stay around for a little bit. I just don't know that they ever became what anybody would call an A-lister. So, yeah, this is Weekend at Bernie's. Um, I don't know why I watched this film. Oh, I'll tell you why. I've been searching for Robo Description on Amazon. And I figured, hey, it's an old film. I doubt they hired a real human being to do the audio description. I was right. It's Robo Description. So, um, I've, I've watched a couple films with Robo Description. I'm going to keep reviewing Amazon's Robo Description, uh, I guess, uh, just to keep talking about it. Because it's a very interesting concept to me, where they just sort of use their, you know, echo device voice um, to, uh, to narrate, or a bad version of it, like an early version. It doesn't sound like the current version of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds like the original, like, prototype voice for Echo. I can't say her name. She's too close to me. Um, and, uh, so that's what it is. And it's so obviously not a human voice. Um, and it's incredibly monotone. And it takes the whole... I've seen, like, some really performative uh, audio description where the people get really into it, you know. And uh, when the action sequences increase, they, like, they increase, increase the intensity of their voices. That can't happen with a robot. Uh, they don't have the ability to do that to change the inflection. Um, but this time I will say, and I hate giving props to robo description at all. Um, I mean, it exists. Yes. It's, it's, it's audio description and it exists, you know, it's like technically celery is food. Um, but if all you had to eat was celery for the rest of your life, I'm sure you'd be like, what did I do wrong with my life? Um, this was written well, for the most part, uh, every other time that I've been encountering robo description, I've been encountering robo description that goes over on top of dialogue. And that actually didn't happen with weekend at Bernie's. However, there were some scenes where we did not get quite the narration there were some scenes where you could hear like some sound effects, like there was a kerfuffle happening or something, and there just wasn't audio description. Um, there was one time where uh, one of the characters fell down a trap door, and I didn't even understand like where he was to find down fall down the trap door, like or what happened. Like I didn't. The whole scene was lost on me because I was like, "What just happened?" Because the audio description just totally failed me going into the scene um, and while the scene was happening. And I didn't even, I couldn't even, I was trying to piece together where they were, what just happened. Um, I was like, they're in like a, these are rich people who, a trap door to where? Like, what, do we, what, what is this trap door to? Um, anyway, so, uh, it didn't, it didn't quite always, always give me everything that I needed. So it's not, even for robot description, it didn't like hit a home run, but it's, it's a better robot description than I've gotten from Amazon because usually they don't have anybody who comes in at the end and goes, Oh, did we do it right? Or are we talking on top of the audio description? like Jolt, which was maddening, uh, to have the audio description talking, talking at the same time as Kate Beckinsale was driving me insane. Um, and, uh, the Terminator was another one, uh, with a robo description that just went over dialogue. So, uh, this is one that doesn't go over dialogue. Uh, that's really the best thing I can, the best compliment I can give it is thank you for not trampling the dialogue in the film in this really stupid comedy about everybody who has 
the inability to tell when somebody is dead, including a lady that, by the way, sleeps with him. Yes. They, of course, put that in the film. So, um... Yep. That's in Weekend at Bernie's. Bernie gets laid post-mortem. Post, uh... Oh, God. Um, I don't know what to do with this film. I feel like in the 80s, this was like the thing and everybody laughed at it. And this was just like the hangover or dude, where's my car? And I look back on it now and I'm like, I I don't know. I, I, I mean, it was classic enough that they somehow made a sequel. I don't know how they made a sequel to it. I'm, I'm so interested in how they managed to find Bernie's corpse and like rehash a sequel that I... (laughs) I will track down Weekend at Bernie's too, because I really, I don't functionally understand how that film conceptually could work. Um, but we'll look at it. If I can find it with, with audio description, I'll look at it. and I'm sure it'll blow my mind. Um, but this is typical 80s stupid comedy. We've, you know, I mean, there are tons of comedies like this, so... I can't hate on it too much. It's not terrible. Um, It just, like, it requires such a gigantic leap of faith that it keeps asking you to make that everyone in this film is really stupid. Like, everyone in this film, there's not a single intelligent character in this film. Not one. Not one smart character. Everyone in this character is stupid in at least... One flawed way, one giant flawed way, some of them many giant flawed ways. So, um, but they all act smart. They don't play stupid like the dude, where's my car people where they, you know, dude, where's my, where's my car, dude? You know, it wasn't like that. Uh, they literally, they try to act like they're all like normal people, but they can't function. Um, I'm going to give... Weekend at Bernie's. I have to remember, I'm in the 80s. I'm going to give it a B-. minus. I feel like that's probably accurate. Transporting myself back. I, I'm not just going to bash a movie for being old. Um, I feel like this is probably a B- minus title. This would have been about where I would have put those films, like The Hangover and you know all the other films I've listed so far. So... <sighs> Yeah, watch it, don't watch it, whatever. Uh, it has a robot description anyway, so y- you got to make that choice for yourself whether or not you're willing to sit through um, a robot narrating for you. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can visit my website, MacTheMovieGuy.com, for more. Let me know what you think in the comments about Weekend at Bernie's, wait, or Weekend at Bernie's 2, or anything else. And uh, don't forget to view the audio description project for a list of films with audio description and also robo description. So um, that's it for me. And uh, see you on the other side, Bernie.